once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel and squeaked through its funnel and wouldn't come out again. The engine's name is Henry. His driver and fireman argued with him, but he would not move. The rain will spoil my lovely green pen and red stripes. The guard blew his whistle until he had no more breath, and waved his flags till his arms ate. But Henry still stayed in the tunnel and blew steam at him. I'm not going to ruin my lovely green paint and red stripes for you. The passengers came and argued too, but Henry would not move. No. No. Leave me alone. Then, along came Sir Topham Hatt, the man in charge of all the engines on the island of Sodor. They call him the Fat Controller. He came up to the front of the train and told the guard to fetch some rope from his van. We will pull you out. But Henry only blew steam at him and made him wet. Leave me alone. They attached the rope to Henry's front coupling and all pulled except the Fat Controller. My doctor has forbidden me to pull. They pulled and pulled and pulled. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. Then they tried pushing from the other end. One, two, three, push. But he didn't help himself. My doctor has forbidden me to push. They pushed and pushed and pushed. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. At last, a red tender engine called Winston came along. Henry's guard waved his red flag and stopped him. The two engine drivers, the two firemen, and the two guards went and argued with Henry. Look, Henry, it stopped raining. Yes, but it will begin again soon, and what would become of my green paint with red stripes then? So they brought Winston up. <laughs> And the red engine Get pushed and moving. puffed, you and puffed and pushed move. as hard as ever he could. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. Come on! Come on! Come on! Eventually, even the Fat Controller gave up. We shall take away your rails and leave you here for always and always and always. While Winston pulled the coaches out of the tunnel, some workmen took up the old rails and built a big brick wall in front of Henry so that he couldn't get out of the tunnel anymore. All he could do was to watch the trains rushing through the other tunnel. He was very sad because he thought no one would ever see his lovely green paint with red stripes again. But as time went on, other engines would often pass by. Some would say, Poop, poop, hello. While others would say, Poop, 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 serves you right. Poor Henry had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out. Soot and dirt from the tunnel roof had spoiled his lovely green paint and red stripes anyway. He was cold and unhappy. He wondered if he would ever be allowed to come out and pull trains again. This is a little blue engine called Edward. He lived in a shed with five other engines. They were all bigger than Edward and boasted about it. The driver won't choose you again. He wants big, strong engines like us. Hey, Edward may be smaller than you, a bit smaller than me in fact, but he still has his uses. Bah! 
Like what? Just then, the driver and fireman came along to start work. The driver looked at Edward. Why you said? Would you like to come out today? Oh yes, please. So the fireman lit the fire and made a nice lot of steam. Then, the driver pulled the lever and Edward puffed away. Look at me now! Look at me now! Winston was happy for his old friend, but the others were very cross at being left behind. Away went Edward to fetch some coaches. Amongst the coaches in Edward's train that day were two old straddly four-wheelers named Annie and Clarabelle. Oh, please do be careful, Edward! Don't bump and ban us like the other engines do! So Edward came up to the coaches very, very gently. Oh, thank you, Edward. That was kind. We are glad you are taking us today. Just then, the shunter shouted. Hey, the coupling's gone on the first coach. Don't worry, I'll go fetch another one. After the new coupling was fitted, Edward took the coaches to the station where the passengers were waiting. Peep, peep, get in quickly, please. So the passengers got in quickly, and Edward waited happily for the guard to blow his whistle and wave his green flag. They waited, and waited, but there was no whistle, and no green flag. The coaches were getting anxious. Where, Where is, is that guard? So Edward's driver and fireman went to ask the station master if he'd seen the guard. But the station master just said, No. They asked the porter. Have you seen the guard? Yes, last night. Edward began to get cross. <sighs> Are we ever going to start? Just then, a little boy shouted, Here he comes! And there the guard was, running as fast as he could, with his flags and whistle in one hand, and a sandwich in the other. He ran onto the platform, blew his whistle, and jumped into Clarabelle. Edward set off. He did have a happy day. All the children ran to wave as he passed, and he met old friends at all the stations. He worked so hard that the driver promised to take him out again next day. I'm going out again tomorrow. What do you think of that? But he didn't hear what they thought, for he was so tired and happy that he fell asleep at once. Next morning, Edward woke up to find nothing had changed. The big engines were still boasting. One of the engines in Edward's shed was called Gordon. He was very big and very proud. You watch me this afternoon, little Edward, when I rush through in the express. That will be a splendid sight for you. Just then, his driver pulled the lever. Goodbye, little Edward. Look out for me this afternoon. Edward went off too to do some shunting. Edward liked shunting. It was fun playing with trucks. He would come up quietly and give them a quick pull. Then he would stop and the silly trucks would go bump into each other. Oh, oh, oh! Whatever is happening? Edward pushed them until they were running nicely, and when they weren't expecting it, he would stop. One of them would be sure to run onto the other line. Do it again! Do it again! Okay, okay. Keep your buttons on. Edward played till there were no more trips. Then he stopped to rest. Presently, he heard a whistle. And Gordon came puffing along very slowly and very crossly. Instead of nice shining coaches, he was pulling a lot of very dirty coal trucks. 
A good train. A good train. A good train. And he went slowly through with the trunks clattering and banging behind him. went to find some more trunks. Soon afterwards, a porter came and spoke to Edward's driver. Gordon can't get up the hill. Will you take Edward and push him, please? They found Gordon halfway up the hill, and he was very cross. His driver and fireman were talking to him severely. Oh, come on, Gordon. You're not even trying. I can't do it. Those noisy trucks hold an engine back. If they were coaches, clean, sensible things that come quietly, that would be different. Edward's driver came up. We've come to puss. No use at all. Well, you wait and see. They brought the train back to the bottom of the hill. Edward came up behind the brake van, ready to push. Peep, peep! I'm ready! Boop, boop! No good! They pulled and pushed as hard as they could. Gordon pulled. I can't do it! I can't do it! I can't do it! Edward pushed. I will do it! I will do it! I will do it! Edward pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever he could. And almost before he realized it, Gordon found himself at the top of the hill. I've got it! I've got it! I've got it! He forgot all about Edward. And didn't wait to say thank you, but instead ran on so fast that he passed two stations before his driver could make him stop. Edward had pushed so hard that when he got to the top, he was out of breath. Gordon ran on so fast that Edward was left behind. The guard waved and waved, but Edward couldn't catch up. Instead, he ran on to the next station, and there the driver and fireman said they were very pleased with him. The fireman gave him a nice long drink, and the driver said, I'll get out my paint tomorrow and give you a fresh new coat of blue with red stripes. Then you'll be the smartest engine in the shed. Edward was pleased, but he couldn't stop thinking about poor Henry all bricked up and lonely in the tunnel. Poor Henry. He must be miserable in that cold, dark tunnel. I must speak to the fast controller about giving him another chance. <laughs> Gordon always pulled the big express. He was proud of being the only engine strong enough to do so. There are many heavy coaches full of important people, like the Fat Controller. Today, Gordon was seeing how fast he could go. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Tiddly talk, tiddly talk, tiddly talk! Tiddly tiddly talk. talk. Oh dear, why did I worry about rain spoiling my lovely coat of paint? Will the Fat Controller ever forgive me and let me out again? Gordon could see Henry's tunnel in front. <laughs> he was almost there, when... And there was Gordon going slower and slower, in a cloud of steam. His driver stopped the train just before the tunnel. I feel so weak. You've burst your safety valve. You can't pull the train anymore. Oh dear, we were going so nicely too. And look, 
Is Henry laughing at me? <laughs> Gordon made a face at Henry and blew smoke at him. Everyone came to see Gordon. Huh. I never liked these big engines. Always going wrong. Send for another engine at once. While the guard went to find one, they uncoupled Gordon and ran him onto a siding out of the way. The only engine left in the shed was Edward. Edward, Gordon isn't feeling very well. Can you come and pull his train for him? Well, I'll try. Gordon saw Edward coming. Oh, that's no But he couldn't move the heavy coaches. I told you so. Edward turned to the fat controller. Excuse me, sir. Why not let Henry try? What? After everything that Big Green Pillock put us through, there's no way Sir Top of Matt will let him out. Yes, I will. Will you help pull this train, Henry? Oh, yes, sir. Only two pleased. So Gordon's driver and fireman lit Henry's fire, some plane layers broke down the wall and put back the rails, and when Henry had steam up, he puffed out. He was very dirty. His boiler was black and he was covered with cobwebs. Oh, I am stiffed. I am stiffed. Have a run to ease your joints and find a turntable. When Henry came back, he felt much better. Then they coupled him up. Peep, peep. I'm ready. Peep, peep, peep. So am I. Full hard, we'll, we'll do, do it. it. Full hard, hard we'll, we'll do, do it. it. The heavy coaches jerked and began to move. Slowly at first, then faster and faster. We've, We've done, done it together! together. We've, We've done, done it together! together. You've, You've done, done it, hooray! You've done it, hooray! All the passengers were excited. The fat controller leaned out of the window to wing to Edward and Henry. But the train was going so fast that his hat flew off into a field where a goat ate it for tea. They never stopped until they came to the big station at the end of the line. The passengers all got out and thanked Henry. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Well done, Henry. What a splendid ride. And the fat controller promised Henry a new coat of paint. Would you like to be blue and red? Oh, yes, please, sir. Then I'll be like Edward and Gordon. That will be nice. Edward and Henry went home quietly. And on their way home, they helped Gordon back to the shed. All three engines are now great friends. Henry was very pleased to get his new coat of bright blue paint. He's very proud of it, as all engines are. Henry doesn't mind the rain now. He knows that the best way to keep his paint nice is not to run and hide in tunnels, but to ask his driver to rub him down when the day's work is over. Thomas is a tank engine. He's a cheeky little engine with six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. He was a fussy little engine too, always pulling coaches about ready for the big engines to take on long journeys. 
And when trains come in, he pulled the empty coaches away so that the big engines could go and rest. He liked best of all to come quietly beside an engine resting on a signing and make them jump. Wake up, lazy bones! Why don't you work hard like me? Then he would laugh and run away. <laughs> One day, Gordon was resting on a siding. He was very tired. The big express had been late, and he had had to hurry to make up for the time he'd lost. He was just going to sleep when Thomas came up in his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones, do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me! And off he ran laughing. Instead of going to sleep again, Gordon thought how he could get back at Thomas. One morning, Thomas wouldn't wake up. His driver and fireman couldn't make him start. His fire went out and there was not enough steam. It was nearly time for the express. People were waiting, but the coaches weren't ready. At last, Thomas started. Oh dear, oh dear. The coaches were very impatient. Come on, hurry up, we'll be late. Thomas gave them a rude bump and started for the station. The coaches were now very grumpy. Where have you been? Where have you been? Come on, stop dawdling, stop dawdling. He fussed into the station where Gordon was waiting. Hurry up, you! Hurry yourself! Gordon began making his plan. Yes, I will. And almost before the coaches had stopped moving, Gordon reversed quickly and was coupled to the train. Get in quickly, please. So the people got in quickly. The signal went down. The clock struck the hour. The guard blew his whistle and waved his green flag. And Gordon was ready to start. Thomas usually pushed behind the big trains to help them start. But he was always uncoupled first so that when the train was running nicely, he could stop and go back. Today, he was late, and Gordon started so quickly they forgot to uncouple Thomas. Gordon's chance had come. Come on, come on, come on! The train went faster and faster. Too fast for Thomas. He wanted to stop, but he couldn't. Beep, beep! Stop, stop! Poor Thomas was going faster than he had ever gone before. He was out of breath, and his wheels hurt him when he had to go. I shall never be the same again. My wheels became quite worn out. last, they stopped at a station. Thomas was uncoupled, and he felt very silly and exhausted. Next, he went on to the turntable, thinking of everyone laughing at him. Then he ran onto a signing out of the way. Well, little Thomas, now you know what hard work is like, don't you? Poor Thomas couldn't answer. He had no breath. He just popped slowly away to rest and had a long, long drink. He went home very slowly and was careful afterwards never to be cheeky to Gordon again.
When he got back to Vickerstown, he told the Fat Controller what had happened and where he'd been. The stout gentleman told Thomas that he would speak to Gordon as soon as he got back, and sent the little tank engine off to the shed to rest. A few days later, Thomas was grumbling to the other engines. I spend my time pulling couches about, ready for you to take out on journeys. The bigger engines laughed, but Edwin and Winston felt sympathetic towards the little blue engine. Why can't I pull passenger trains too? You're too impatient. You'd be sure to leave something behind. This annoyed Thomas. Rubbish! Just you wait. I'll show you. One night, he and Henry were alone. Henry was ill. The men worked hard on him, but he didn't get better. He felt just as bad next morning. Henry usually pulled the first train of the day, and Thomas had to get his coaches ready. If Henry is ill... Perhaps I shall pull his train. Thomas ran to find the coaches. Come along, come along. There's plenty of time. There's plenty of time. Thomas took them to the platform and wanted to run round in front at once. But his driver wouldn't let him. Don't be impatient, Thomas. Thomas waited and waited. The people got in. The guard and station master walked up and down. The porters banged the doors. And still Henry didn't come. Thomas got more and more excited every minute. The fat controller came out of his office to see what was the matter. And the guard and the station master told him about Henry. I'm afraid Henry isn't feeling well, sir. Well, find another engine then. There's only Thomas. You'll have to do it then, Thomas. Be quick now. So Thomas ran round to the front and back down on the coaches ready to start. Now don't be impatient, Thomas. Wait till everything is ready. But Thomas was too excited to listen to a word he said. What happened then, no one knows. Perhaps they forgot to couple Thomas to the train. Perhaps Thomas was too impatient to wait till they were ready. Or perhaps the driver pulled the lever by mistake. Anyhow, Thomas started without his coaches. People waved and shouted at him, but he didn't stop. They're waving because I'm such a splendid engine. Henry says it's hard to pull trains, but I think it's easy. And he pretended to be like Gordon. Hurry, hurry, hurry! As he passed the first signal tower, he saw the men leaning out, waving and shouting. They're pleased to see me. They've never seen me pulling a train before. It's nice of them to wave. And he whistled. Thank you. Then he came to a signal at danger. Bother! I must stop and I was going so nicely too. What a nuisance signals are. And he blew an angry peep peep on his whistle. One of the signalmen ran up. Hello, Thomas. What are you doing here? I'm pulling a train. Can't you see? Where are your coaches then? Thomas looked back. Why, bless me. Did we haven't left them behind. Yes. You'd better go back quickly and fetch them. Poor Thomas was so sad, he nearly cried. Cheer up. Let's go back quickly and try again. Station, all the passengers were talking at once. They were telling the fat controller, the station master, and the guard what a bad railway it was. But when Thomas came back and they saw how sad he was, they couldn't be cross. He was coupled to the train, and this time he really pulled it. For a 
a long time afterwards, the big engines laughed at Thomas and said, Look, there's Thomas, who wanted to pull the train, but forgot about the coaches. This angered Thomas, and he wouldn't stop being a nuisance. Night after night, he kept the other engines awake. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. The other engines didn't take much notice, for Thomas was a little engine with a long tongue. But one night, Edward came to the shed. He was a kind little engine and felt sorry for Thomas. I've got trucks to take home tomorrow. If you take them instead of me, I'll push coaches in the yard. Thank you, that would be nice. Next morning, Edward and Thomas asked their drivers if they could change jobs for the day. And when they said yes, Thomas ran off happily to find the trucks. Now trucks are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. And I'm sorry to say that they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about trucks. He warned Thomas to be careful, but Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling, and when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The guard blew his whistle, but the trucks weren't ready. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, wait, Thomas, Thomas wait. wait! But Thomas wouldn't wait. Come along, come along. Oh, All right, don't fuss. Fuss. All All right, right, don't, don't fuss. fuss. Don't fuss. Thomas began going faster and faster. Whee! And they raced through Henry's tunnel. They clattered through stations. And rattled over bridges. Trucks grew crosser and crosser. At last, Thomas slowed down as he came to Gordon's Hill. Steady now, steady. As they reached the top, he began to put on the brakes. We're stopping! We're stopping! No! 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 no. And the trucks bumped into each other. Go, go on, on! Go, go on. on! Before the driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing! Stop pushing! But the trucks took no notice. Go on! Go, go on! on! Thomas was glad when they got to the bottom, but then he saw in front the place where they had to stop. There's the station! Oh dear, what should I do? They rattled straight through and swerved into the goods yard. Thomas shut his eyes. I must stop. When he opened his eyes, he saw that he had stopped just in front of the buffers. 
there watching him was the fat controller. Thomas, what are you doing here? And why were you going so fast? I brought Pickles trucks for him, sir, but they were pushing me. You've still got a lot to learn about trucks though, Thomas. They're silly things and must be kept in their place. That's why I asked Edward to take these trucks, and not you. I'm sorry, sir. I just wanted to prove to the bigger wrenches that I am a really useful engine. The fat controller wasn't just cross with Thomas. He was cross with Edward, too. He told them that Thomas would have to take Edward's place at Wellsworth Yard until Thomas could learn how to handle trucks properly. I'm sorry, Edward. This is all my fault. No, Thomas. It's my fault. I let you take those trucks before you were ready. You're both to blame. I'm not cross with either of you. Just... disappointed. I hope both of you have learned a lesson from all of this. Yes, yes sir. The bigger engine sniggered. They stopped suddenly when the fat controller turned on them, and he started to turn them off from potentially getting Thomas into serious trouble. Hello, Thomas. Good morning, sir. Now remember what I said. Don't let those big engines or the silly trucks get to you. You'll never be as strong or as fast as Gordon, but you still have an important role to play in the yard. Thomas worked very hard. He knew now that he wasn't as clever as he thought, and wanted to know all about trucks, so as to be a really useful engine. But on a siding, by themselves, were some trucks which Thomas was told he mustn't touch. There was a small coach, some flat trucks, and two queer things his driver called cranes. That's the breakdown train. And when there's an accident, the workmen get into the coach. And the engine takes them quickly to help the hurt people, and to clear and mend the line. The cranes are for lifting heavy things, like engines, and coaches, and trucks. One day, Thomas was in the yard, when suddenly he heard an engine whistling. Help! Help! And a goods train came rushing through very fast. The engine, a new one called James, was frightened. His brake blocks were on fire, and smoke and sparks streamed out on each side. They're fudging me! They're fudging me! Those stupid trucks are fudging me! On! 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 And poor James disappeared under a bridge, whistling for help. I'd like to teach those trucks a lesson. Soon came the alarm. James is off the line! The breakdown train! Quickly! So Thomas was coupled on and off they went. Thomas worked his hardest. Hurry, hurry, hurry! He wasn't pretending to be like Gordon. He really meant it. Bother those stupid trucks and their tricks! I only hope poor James isn't that. They found James and the trucks at a bend in the line. The brake van and the last few trucks were still on the rails, but the front ones were piled in a heap. James was in a field with a cow looking at him, and his driver and fireman were feeling him all over to see if he was hurt. 
Never mind, James. It wasn't your fault. It was those warning breaks they gave you. We always said they were no good. Thomas pushed the breakdown train alongside. Then he pulled the unhurt trucks out of the way. Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear. Serves you right! Serves you right! He was hard at work, puffing backwards and forwards all afternoon. This'll teach you a lesson! This'll teach you a lesson! Oh dear! Oh dear! <laughs> Yes, it will! Yes, it will! They left the broken trucks and mended the line. And when they put James back on the rails, he tried to move, but he couldn't. So Thomas helped him back to the shed. Fat controller and the other engines were waiting anxiously for them. Well done, Thomas. I heard all about it, and I am very pleased with you. You're a really useful engine. Thank you, sir. Happy to help. Even Gordon was impressed. I am very sorry about this, sir. It's all right, James. It wasn't your fault, and I intend to put this right. You shall receive some proper breaks, a bit of repair here and there, and a new coat of paint. Thank you, sir. Would it be possible for me to be painted into a different color, sir? To be perfectly honest, I've never been too fond of this black livery. Of course, James. We can paint you any color you want. Thank you, sir. And Thomas? As a reward for your bravery and heroism, you shall have a branch line owe to yourself. Really, sir? My very own branch line? Oh, thank you, sir! Really? Congratulations, Thomas! Well done, Thomas! Bravo, old boy! That's wonderful, Thomas! I've never been more proud of you! But who will fetch our coaches, sir? Tender enters on men to shunt! I don't know, Gordon. Perhaps you'll have to fetch your own until I can find another small engine, like Thomas. Oh, the indignity. A few days later, Thomas, Edwin, and Winston were at Tintmouth Station on the western side of the island when a red engine pulled into the yard. Ahem. James? Is that you? It is, indeed. How do you like my new paintwork? You look splendid in red. Thank you, Edward. All ready to head off to your branch line, Thomas? Almost. If I'm going to be running a branch line, I'm going to need some coaches. But I don't have any. You do know! Huh? Annie? Clarabelle? That's right, Thomas. We're your coaches now. We are your responsibility, and vice versa. Off to see the world now, Thomas. Yes, Edward, I am. <coughs> Wake up, lazy bones! Really useful engine coming through!
Oh, hello, Thomas. It's been a while, isn't it? It certainly has, Glenn. The fox controller gave me my branch line a few days ago. Well, look after the branch line, Thomas, and wear that number with pride. Don't worry, Glenn. You can count on me. is as happy as can be. He has his very own branch line and his own faithful coaches Annie and Clarabelle. He puts proudly backwards and forwards with them all day. He's never lonely, as there is always some engine to toss to at the junction. Edward and Henry stop quite often in telling the news. Gordon is always in a hurry and doesn't stop, but never forgets to say beep, beep, and Thomas always whistles beep, beep in return. <laughs>